Once again, you're going to have to apologize for the squinting. My eye is uh, literally falling apart. However, this rather futuristic looking thing is the Zima board, an x86 mini PC with a few unique twists that make it an interesting option for at least a few niche groups. I should preface this review by saying that I have very mixed feelings towards this thing. On the one hand, it is a reasonable bit of kit with a few genuine use cases, but on the other hand, it's an overhyped and underdelivering mess. I think that they overall uh, they oversell this so much to, to such a degree that it genuinely annoys me, but I know that a lot of people like this thing too, so I'm going to do my best to be as balanced as possible. Right, let's get into this. Icewell, the makers of the Zima Award, call this the world's first hackable single board server and sell this as basically a one-click home server. Everything from a, a personal NAS and media server to your home router and smart home controller. Now, how they think this is uh, hackable, I'm really not sure. There's no GPIO headers here like a Raspberry Pi. Hell, you can't even overclock the thing so the only hackable feature is the ability to install software, which isn't exactly a unique feature to this thing. Something that is fairly unique for this sort of device is the PCI X4 slot on the site. While it is only PCI Gen 2, other SBCs generally opt for M.2 slots rather than a PCIe slot. That means you can stick something like a quad port ethernet card in there and have this as a full router and switch. Speaking of ethernet, you've got dual gigabit NICs on board, Realtek ones in particular, uh, alongside two USB 3 ports, mini display ports, and the DC barrel power jack input. Lastly, on the other side, you've got two SATA ports and a smaller header in the middle, which is actually the power header for both of those drives. Icewell includes a single power and data cable in the box, but they'll also sell you the dual version for just $3.90. Why they don't include that one just in the box is beyond me, and especially because you'd have to throw this one away if you're going to use that dual adapter since there's only one power port. Now inside here, you'll either find a Celeron N3350 or N3450, depending on which model you get. I have the top end 832 model, which means I get the N3450 as well, uh, or that's a quad core, as well as 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. And regardless of the chip, you get 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage and a 6 watt TDP. Although in my testing, the chip was reporting upwards of 13 watts of power consumption. The power draw or the power adapter does uh, 12 volts at 3 amps, so 36 watts, meaning there is enough juice here to power the board, a basic PCIe card, and two hard drives, but you won't be powering things like graphics cards from the PCIe slot in particular. Now with the tour out of the way, let's talk about what this is meant to be used for. Icewell reckons that this is the perfect plug and play personal server. From a hardware perspective, I can see where they're coming from. Dual gigabit ethernet means that you can run OpenSense pretty well here as your router, and the SATA ports mean that you can run something like TrueNAS Scale as your NAS OS of choice, and then run stuff like Plex or Jellyfin on that too. That makes some sense. The, the software site is something that Icewell also has something for you too. It's called Casa OS. It's not actually an operating system, it's not even a Linux distro, it's basically a web server that makes setting up Docker containers relatively easy. There's an app store where you can browse through the pre-configured containers and then basically just one-click install them. This is undeniably handy, although it is worth pointing out that since this is just a web server, this can be installed on basically any machine. It doesn't have to be a Zima board. It works on a Raspberry Pi or a desktop PC running basically any Linux distro you want. It's also worth noting that my Zima board came with CasaOS pre-installed, 
but equally pre-broken. I would go to the, the localhost or casaos.local and all that I would get is the Apache initial install page. I tried running the uninstall command, which didn't do anything, and I tried running the install command again, but again that would just freeze indefinitely. So as with all problems with Linux, I just reinstalled the operating system. I stuck Debian 12 on it, which is what the CasOS pre-installed version is based on anyway, and then I ran the CasOS install command. That finally did the trick, and I could access the CasOS web page. Actually, let me show you that page. It's their NAS-like dashboard with the app store full of those pre-configured Docker container configs. You just hit install, and it gets everything pulled and running, and then you launch the appropriate IP address and ports to access whatever you've installed. In this case, I installed File Browser, a great file sharing and personal cloud solution. That works fine, both on the Zima board uh, itself and from inside my local network. You can, of course, install any number of these different packages. Plex or Jellyfin, I'm sure, are popular options, as are things like WireGuard, PyHole, and other private cloud tools uh, like SyncThings as well. It's all pretty simple. CasOS creates a folder in the root of your system drive called data, where by default it stores all of your media uploads, downloads from those containers. If you want to move that to another drive, you will need to know how to mount a drive on Linux, with read and write permissions no less, and trust me, it's not quite as simple, especially if you've used the drive before on something like Windows, and then you can move, uh, use the web UI to move that uh, location to your new drive. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the joys of Linux, unfortunately. Now, if you want to use this thing as your router as well, well, that's kind of where it gets a bit tricky. You will probably want to install something like Proxmox as the base layer, and then install OpenSense to run the, the router set of things, and then grab something like TrueNAS Scale to run the NAS functions. You could also go back to using Debian with CasOS, but if you want good NAS functionality, TrueNAS would be a lot better. The Zima board's website includes a guide on how the, the, you know, on the main page of how to turn this thing, the Zima board, into a router, and it says to just replace the operating system with OpenWRT. So it's clear they expect you to swap the operating system to get whatever functionality you're after. Something that still confuses me is the suggestion that you might want multiple of these for different functions. Now the idea itself isn't terrible, and the channel Radal showed a cool high availability Proxmox cluster demo that I'll link in the description, but I can't help but feeling like the form factor of the Zima board doesn't really allow for that to work well. Unlike the Raspberry Pi, there's no easy mounting solution or stackable solution here. The ports are all at the back, but if you have a PCIe car connected, it just sticks out the side. There's actually no way to secure a PCIe card to the Zima board, certainly not securely, and what's worse is the rear RAIO bracket of your PCIe card needs to be removed, as it not only clashes with the, the Zima board height-wise, as in you just physically can't insert it with the rear RAIO bracket there, but it also covers the mini DisplayPort connection. So you just have a you know PCIe card dangling around the side, which is not exactly going to stack nicely. Then there's the two SATA ports. Again, where are you meant to put those drives? Uh, under, I guess? But there's no case, there's no chassis. They would just be loose and stacked on top of each other, which is bad for vibrations. How you're meant to have multiple of these with drives and add-in cards in any reasonable order is beyond me. Even the power supply isn't great for having multiple. It's a barrel jack. You can't just split that up to use one plug to power multiple. You would need multiple plug sockets and multiple adapters. It's not exactly a clean solution. The thing that strikes me with the Zima board is that I'd rather just buy a used thin client or a small used business desktop for 50 quid on eBay and slap a few drives in it, some cheap DR3, an SSD, and a NIC or two, 
And I think all of that would still be less than buying this thing. And it would be an enclosed system, it would have more functionality and upgradability. This thing can't be upgraded or even repaired. A small desktop can. If I'm honest, I didn't really understand this thing until I realized something in particular. This is just a two bay NAS without the enclosure. Everything it's promising is what pre-built NAS units from the likes of QNAP or Synology already do, but this is a more DIY version. Admittedly, it is considerably cheaper than a similarly specced 2 bay NAS, and a bit more sort of hands-on software-wise, so if you don't mind the janky form factor, you are getting a pretty good deal. It's far from perfect. A better mounting system for the PCIe cards and a bit more of an ecosystem of enclosures and mounting options would go a long way, but it's hard to argue with the versatility that this thing offers. Just for God's sake, stop marketing it like it's a revolutionary, you know, game-changing, class-leading bit of kit. It's really not, and it's not a new idea, it's just a desktop and a janky form factor. So in short, the Zima board is a fairly unique, if overhyped, single board computer that's well suited to essentially being a DIY 2 bay NAS, albeit missing a way to actually hold those drives or the expansion cards that you might want. It's very competitively priced for the specs and I.O., although if you don't need the storage and connectivity, a Pi is still a better, more cost-effective, you know, micro-home server solution. I'd still personally recommend a small use desktop instead, if you do need that storage and form factor, but if you do want the, this sort of janky form factor that badly, I don't think this is a bad shout. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the Zima board? Is it the perfect form factor for you, or would you rather go with a, a Pi, a used PC, or a 2 bay NAS instead? Let me know in those comments down below. I will leave a link to them in the description if you're interested, and otherwise that's kind of it. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can check out plenty of other videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second. And if you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs I made myself, or even picking up one of my own hardware tools, my open source latency and response time testing tools. Feel free to check that out at osrtt.com. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hope you uh, don't mind my, uh, my squinting and immense pain. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.